All right, got to go. Bye. Okay, everybody ready? Yes. On uh, November 21st today at about 3.30 this morning, uh, the Smith County Sheriff's Office received a report of a missing child from an address at uh, 23405 FM 838, which is near Overton, Texas. Uh, the deputies arrived on scene and uh, they were able to discover that uh, Zechariah Sutton, a five-year-old uh, male subject, was missing from this location. Uh, the deputies found out that the child went with a family friend by the name of Pamela Yvonne Medlock, 59 years of age, at approximately 11 o'clock yesterday morning. Uh, so the, the, the premise was that she was going to go get him some toys for his birthday. His birthday had just passed a few days earlier. Um, they haven't been seen since that time by anyone in person. Uh, Zechariah is described as a black male, three foot five, about uh, 60 to 70 pounds. He was last seen wearing a gray sweat top and gray sweat pants uh, with black shoes. And uh, Pamela Medlock is described as a black female, 5'6", medium to heavy build with a cornrows hair. Uh, she does uh, not have a permanent address in the area, but we do have several addresses that we are following up on at this time, trying to locate this vehicle and or her and the, and, and the victim. Uh, we did issue an, alarm, an amber alert uh, early this morning. Uh, we have reason to believe that the child may be in danger due to the mental state of the uh, individual who uh, took him to the store. Uh, I'm going to let uh, Detective, uh, the Sergeant of Criminal Investigations here talk to you all a minute about a few other little details on this case. Uh, did you want to talk to him about the, um, um, uh, the Walmart video? Uh, yes, I'm Sergeant Railsback with the Smith County Sheriff's Office. Uh, We've been looking into the uh, missing child, and in the course of that investigation through different law enforcement systems, we learned that they visited the Walmart on Troop Highway yesterday afternoon uh, between the hours, it uh, looks like uh, 2.30 and 3.30, uh, give or take. Uh, we confirmed we've been working with Walmart Global, and uh, they pulled their security fan footage. Uh, both of them were there. They walked in together and walked out together. Uh, they purchased a couple toys and a couple blankets and left the store they paid in cash. Uh, we're continuing to look into the Walmart lead and uh, if anybody has any more information on that, we'd be glad to field those reports. Um, later on in uh, the afternoon, just shy of 5 p.m., uh, the Jeep Wrangler that's in question was seen uh, in Kaufman County, westbound towards Dallas. So we're looking heavily in the Dallas area right now. We are up with uh, Child Protective Services, uh, FBI Tyler and FBI Dallas, and we are also working with the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children. So we're using all available resources at this time and uh, doing everything we can to look for this child. Uh, the last known clothing description of the female that's the suspect in this right now, she's wearing khaki, baggy khaki pants, some dark colored shoes, a black t-shirt, and she had a light brown plaid uh, jacket on. So that's what we know as far as uh, five or 4.30 yesterday is what she was wearing. Do you have any questions on any of that? You mentioned the, uh, the mental state of the suspect in this case. What are the known mental health conditions this woman may have? Well, we have reason to believe that she does have some mental issues. Uh, we also have reason to believe that there's possibly some narcotic usage in her past. Uh, you know, without going into explicit detail on that, um, you know, I don't have a whole lot of information other than what you know, we've been told about her mental condition and about the narcotic use. But um, that would give us a reason to believe that the child might be in danger. Sir, what was your first and last name again? Uh, Jason Railsback. Could you spell your last name for it's us? It's R-A-I-L-S-B-A-C-K. And Mr. Railsack, could you, um, you talked about the video footage that you guys saw at the Walmart from Walmart Global. Um, what was the nature of the behavior of the two subjects? Uh, did they look like they were okay, seemingly okay, or were they nervous in any nature at all? From all the videos, and I'm just receiving still shots at this time, but from everything I can tell, it looks like they're traveling like a normal uh, relationship. The, she is not holding on to him at all. He's just following her around Walmart, picking out toys. Um, 
nobody looks like they're in any type of distress. Uh, it didn't cause any flags for Walmart at all. So we don't believe at this time that he's it. He believes he's in any danger. Uh, we, he does not appear to be scared in any way. Um, but that, again, that was 4:30 yesterday. So we are we haven't seen or heard from him or her since then. And some people have asked about the length of time from 11 o'clock yesterday morning when he was last seen by his family to the 3 a.m. Uh, report of him missing. Do we know anything about why that took so long for the report? Uh, so what we know as of right now is that. Between the hours of 11 and 12 uh, yesterday afternoon, it looks like uh, Miss Pamela is a family friend, and she came over to visit and had decided to take him into town to go shopping for some birthday uh, toys, uh, which looks like they did carry out. Um, the family had no reason to not let her go with him. They didn't doubt that she would bring him back. It's not something that was uncommon. Uh, as the day got later and later, uh, they kept waiting for her. She does not have a cell phone, so they didn't have a way to contact her. Uh, I think it was one of those things where they didn't believe it could happen to them, so they just were waiting for time to pass, and eventually uh, the grandson would return. Uh, that turned out to not be the fact. They stayed up until about 3 o'clock in the morning waiting on this to happen, and they finally decided to call law enforcement and get us involved, and that's whenever we became more heavily involved in this investigation. And just to be clear on that as well, uh, we don't believe that at this time that Miss Medlock would harm the child. Uh, it's more of a circumstantial thing that um, you know she could get him in the middle of, especially if um, you know she does have some sort of an episode. And, uh, and even with that past narcotic use, I don't know you know what her mindset would be. But you know, again, it's it's more of a circumstantial thing at this point that we believe he could be in danger. And you mentioned the, the last known place we spotted that vehicle, Kaufman County. Any uh, family or friends of her in the Dallas area that there would give her a reason to go that way? So the vehicle that she's registering, which it is registered to an address in Dallas, in the city of. Um, we've checked that address. She's not there. The vehicle is not there. Uh, what we do know at this point is that she owned that house at one point and sold it and has not purchased a second residence. Um, she used that money to purchase this Jeep. She paid cash for the Jeep. Um, so we, we believe that she has some, some cash reserves with her somewhere. We're looking into that. Uh, she does not have a job that we are aware of at this point. So she has nowhere to be, no one to report to at this time. Um, the, the history with her is all of our knowledge of her possibly having a narcotics history or a mental health history is all based off of her contacts with law enforcement in the past. Um, the family didn't speak out about her having any diagnosis or anything like that. It's just been uh, law enforcement contacts. When we talk about that law enforcement contact, is that relatively recent? Does that go back a few years? Uh, I, I can't really speak on how recent it would be. Uh, I know when we spoke with Russ County, they were familiar with her. Uh, and they provided uh, a little insight that they believe she may be into some sort of narcotics usage. Uh, Smith County did not have a heavy history with her at all um, that I've been made aware of at this point. Uh, like I said, we've been more focused on finding the child than digging up uh, her criminal history at this point. Uh, but we are looking into every aspect. I've got an entire team of detectives downstairs uh, actively working on this right now. And you mentioned her history. Um, does any of that history um, correlate to um, doing this before in her past? Uh, no, we have no reason to believe that she's done something like this in the past. Um, we we have a couple uh, working leads that we're working right now. Uh, nothing that we're able to disclose at this time, but uh, the family history and all that we're looking into as well. For Sutton's guardians, since um, Medlock doesn't have a a line of communication. Did they say there was an expected time for the child to be home? Because I, they, you know, they got worried around 3 a.m. But were they to had that been discussed or shared? Uh, to my knowledge, they didn't discuss how long he was going to be gone when they were expecting him. That's why I think they gave her so much leeway. Um, I will say that uh, Sutton's biological mother is in prison. She is not out. Um, so he has been in custody of his grandmother since he was about a week old. 
Um, so m grandmother has been the primary guardian for him since then. Um, and she's the one who, who has made the law enforcement report. And had Medlock, has she taken the boy before to do something like this in the past? Uh, yes, she has taken him shopping. She comes over on a regular basis and helps with homework and visits with the, the kids there and all that. So uh, she's been a family friend for as long as uh, the grandmother has advised us. They've been around. So uh, there have been no red flags to the family until this morning. Do you have any other questions for us? Good. Just be assured that we are working on this case 24-7 uh, until this child is located. And uh, again, the cooperation with Gregg County, Russ County has already helped us out. I do know Dallas PD and the FBI office are working in conjunction with each other at this time as well. Uh, so any other information that we get that's uh, suitable to release, we will get that out to you all as soon as possible. And we certainly appreciate you all getting this out to the public. And what was your title again, sir? Uh, Sergeant. I'm over the uh, person, Crimes Against Persons Unit. Okay. Thank you both. Thank you.